Hi right, guys, so I thought I would bring you along with me on um, a behind the scenes kind of video. It's not behind the scenes as such, but it's going to be um, a video where we get out and we do a few things that I wouldn't normally record. So I thought I would bring you guys along with me and um, just have a chat. So today I've got the intentions of going out there and picking up the game camera that's been out for about two or three weeks now. And then I'd also like to go up to the vantage point where we saw that weird thing running across the field and try to gauge the size by standing near that hedge. Um, I've just recently picked up some second-hand binoculars as well. So I'm excited to get up to that vantage point and have a look out through the binoculars. Hopefully I can put the camera to the lens and get some footage for you as well as if you're looking through the binoculars with me. Lily, up. Up. So I've just been up on top of the hill looking down into the valley with the binoculars at that field where we saw something crazy running along and at the time you know I was saying to you guys it must be big well, big whatever this thing is it must be big because it's almost the same size as the bushes that run um, parallel to the field but looking through the binoculars just then the plot thickens because they don't look like bushes anymore they look like trees now that obviously wouldn't make any sense at all. So I'm gonna walk down to the field um, and check out the terrain firsthand. But just to clear a few things up, because a lot of people watching that footage, or a few people suspected that it might be wild boar. We don't have wild boar in this part of the country and it's certainly not a badger. It was far too big to be a badger and badgers don't tend to come out during daytime hours either. So I'm not sure what the hell it was. The majority of people, I think, on that video were saying that it's definitely not a dog. I mean, it, it didn't run like a dog. It ran more like a bear. The gait of it was more bear-esque, if you will. So I don't know what it was, um, but I know it was big and I know it moved really, really fast. So if it was a wild cat, possibly, um, but I don't know. So that's where I was sat, up there. Um, just roughly about there is where I was sat and obviously this is the field here but you can see all the vegetation in this area like the trees the bushes are way higher than me I mean they're like 15 feet high <laughs> 10 15 feet high so yeah this is the field And this is the terrain that that thing was running on. And it covered this distance in no time at all. There's a hair over there, look, you can just see it running off. The thing is as well, with the ground being so hard, the chances of finding any prints would be quite difficult, unless obviously this thing's been back during a rainy day when this is all softened up and they've managed to set. But yeah, anything coming on a day like today would be difficult to leave a print behind. But as you can see, it was running along the side of this, this hedgerow here and it covered this ground from about halfway down right across there in no time at all. I'd like to actually try and time how long it took this thing to get across this field, but you know, it's all uphill as well. So it was running uphill along the side of these trees and these bushes and it was massive. Now that I'm stood at the side of these bushes, this thing was massive. 
I have no idea what it was, but what I know it wasn't was a dog. <laughs> it wasn't a domesticated dog, I know that much. So I'm five foot six and you can see these tower over me. These must be at least 12 foot, 10, 11, even 12 foot in places, easy. How is that possible? Maybe I've just remembered the size of it wrong, but yeah, it'll be interesting. So on my way up to the field, there was a pond, um, a natural pond. And you know, for anything living in this area, any, wild, any wildlife living in this area especially, that pond would be valuable because there's not many other water sources around. So maybe it was in this, this field trying to make its way over to that water source when down that track came the 4 b the off-road vehicles, which is what forced it back into this field and to run up the hill there. Where was it going? Was it going to the water? Was it going to the farmer's cattle to try and snatch itself a meal? Or was it lying under the hedgerow here and was disturbed by those off-road vehicles? I have no idea what the, the scenario was from that day, but whatever it was, was scared um, from its original plan and escaped across this field. Now, just here is the natural pond. And just beyond the pond are the sheep. I've just literally found this print next to this puddle. And just for comparison, I'll try and show you Lily's paw. Um, let me see if I can get Lily over here. Lily, come. Come. Good girl, stay. Okay, so... This is Lily's paw print. As you can see, the side of my hand is, is nothing. And then we have this. Which, as you can see, the side of my hand is huge. That's worrying. Either that's a huge, huge dog. Oh, that is a wildcat print and I've just got really, really lucky. I have no idea what that, I'm just gonna see if I can find some more of that. There's one there, but it's a bit distorted. I'll just see if I can find one as clear as that, because that is a hell of a find. I mean, that's like a normal dog size. That there is a normal dog size. You can see the difference. Look at that. That's nothing. It's about that big. But what the hell created this thing? That's just ridiculous. Look at the size of it. That's massive. Weird, I can't find, oh, there's another one. Look at the size of it. That is huge. I mean, that's nearly the size of my hand. That is a big animal, a big, big animal. Okay, so that was quite a success, going there and retracing the steps of um, whatever that thing was, and then finding the print as well. That was, that was a huge success. And um, I thought I would be able to clear things up. I thought I'd be able to come away today from that field and tell you guys exactly what I think that was. But now, looking back at the size of those trees, at the print, at the distance it covered in such a short space of time, I think I'm coming away with more questions than I am answers. So yeah, very, very weird. I'm gonna have to look back at the footage from that day to see again what it was but weird. Anyway, now I'm on to the second part of my morning, which is going up to the North Yorkshire Moors to retrieve the game camera. Once I get that, I'll head back home um, and check what, check what the game camera's been watching. Check what it's been spying on for the last three weeks. So I'm excited about that. It's always an anxious time to see what's on the memory card. I should leave it out longer, to be honest, but I'm just really impatient. But now, now that I've got two game cameras to play around with, I can leave them out for longer durations um, of time. 
and one of the game cameras, the new one that's just been recently sent, I can actually monitor what's going on on my phone. So that's even better. I think that will curb my my desire, my need to, to bring it back in and check in every two minutes. Well, the good news is it looks like the game camera's still there. Doesn't look like it's moved. Um, so that's good. Nothing worse when it's been out for a few weeks and you come back and it's on the floor or it's been adjusted. Um, wow, looks like we've had some activity in front of there as well. Oh, that could have been Lily from last time when I was putting it out. I'm not sure. Or it could be deer. So, yeah, I'll be excited to see what this thing's caught. Do you know how I always mention that I have these golden nuggets, these little theories, these thoughts that pop into my mind out of nowhere when I'm driving? It's always when I'm driving. Well, check this one out. So I'm driving along and I start, for some reason, thinking about sophisticated computers like supercomputers and then I started thinking about how we use water and air to cool them down because they are so powerful and for some strange reason I then segued to the earth and started thinking well the earth is made of majority of, of water and surrounded by air but that analogy doesn't really work if you're trying to make out that the earth is a supercomputer event because for that to work, it would mean that the Earth is overheating, which, according to most climatologists, it is. Well, all right, Ben, that's great. So the Earth is a supercomputer, it's a living, breathing organism, and it's cooled down by water and air. So what are the UFOs and the extraterrestrials all about? Well, maybe they're the guys coming back to do the maintenance. And the reason that this computer is failing, it's overheating all the time, is because the water that was used to cool it down is evaporating and things are going south really, really quick. So, ooh, there's an interesting thought. We're living on a living organism, a supercomputer. How about that? I don't even know what I'm talking about. I just like theorizing this way whenever I'm driving kills the time and um, I come up with some really interesting theories I think. <laughs>